But if I remember correctly, this follows a girl named Joanna whose cousin? Is it her cousin? I think it's her cousin. Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with my January TBR. So we are in a brand new year, which means clean slate for the TBR game. So I'm not going to change any of the rules that I've kind of been going with for the past year. So if you're new, hello, welcome, thank you for clicking on this video. I will leave linked above last January's TBR where I go into the details of the game. But basically the point of my TBR basket is to just pick the prompts within here as you can hear, um, and then just find books for those prompts. Now there are some things in here that are very mean. If you saw my December TBR, you will have known that. Um, and I do have some things that I've added this year, just like a few more prompts within the basket. But as far as rules go, pretty much keeping that the same. The only thing I'm doing is like behind the scenes is I'm keeping better track of some of them because there's one rule specifically where like you can't get the same prompt so many times within a time period, the same time period. And I was not very good at tracking that. So I've got to be better. I have a system for tracking that that's going to, I think, work better. Because um, I feel like I got away with not adding some punishments when I probably should have. So like I said, it is a new year, which means clean slate. So we're not rolling over anything from December's TBR. So no punishments, which is great because I did not do so great on those. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we're just going to dive right in and get to the first of my eight rolls. All right, very first pick of the new year. Pick one. Let's see what we got. Here we go. We got, ooh, A to Z book. All right, so we got A to Z book, which means I need to pull up a random letter generator, and then the title of the book has to start with that letter, not including the or A or anything like that. So I have a random letter generator pulled up on my husband's phone. So let's see, there you go, what we've got in. Hmm, in. I don't know. Okay, so I've scoured my shelves, and I'm not even kidding you. I can't find anything that starts with the letter N. That's so weird, right? Okay, so we're going to try this again, because that did not work so well. All right, try number two. D. Okay, I've got, I've got to have something with, with that in it, right? Like, there has to be. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to go with A Dance with the Fae Prince by Elise Kova. This is the second in her Married to Magic series. Um, and again, A, I'm not counting A. This is, spoiler for a future video, on my list of books to read by the end of the year. So this, I'm actually very excited about this. I loved the last one, which was Deal with an Elf King. So this is basically a series of companion standalones. Uh, so they are all in the same world, but they don't have really anything to do with each other. And I don't remember a whole lot about this, but I do know it follows a girl called Katarina, Katria, I think. Um, and then she is like forced to basically marry this uh, fae prince. And then of course, I think it's an enemies to lovers kind of romance, but I loved the last book by this author. So of course, I kind of had to. So we're going to go with this one. Pick number two. It's read an adult book. So the next one is to read an adult book, which is perfect because I've got quite a few historical romances that I would like to get to this month. And the one I'm going to choose for this one is this one, which is The Sound of Snow by Catherine Kingsley. I picked this one up, I think it was in November when I was in my like believe a vlog. I think I picked it up at that used bookstore. Uh, but this, I've never read anything by this author, but Sound of Snow, I mean, come on, it's got like a wintry setting. And then also the step back has like them at like in the snow. This follows a girl named I think Joanna. Yes, Joanna. And she has left the English society because of some sort of scandal and 
I believe went to America. I'm not 100% sure on that. But she left English society and she has come back because her cousin has died and she finds it very suspicious. So she comes back because um, she thinks that the husband did something and she's come to kind of rescue their son. And she somehow gets into being like his governess, I think, to kind of keep an eye on him. And the husband is just very, I think, haunted because she looks a lot like his recently dead wife. And so I'm not sure, you know, if what this is, it looks like a hate to love. It might, she thinks he's done stuff and I'm feeling like he probably didn't. But yeah, I've just, I don't know, just something about this makes me feel very wintry and I'm in the mood for some wintry reads. So that's what I'm going to go with. Pick number three. Read a book with an Asian main character or author. The next one is to read a book with an Asian main character or written by an Asian author. And I think this counts for both because I'm going to be reading the fifth volume of Dreaming Sun by Ichigo Taganu. This is a series that I started last year and just fell in love with, absolutely loved. Um, and now I am, once I finish this, I will be halfway through because there are 10 volumes. So I need to collect some more because I've only got up to six right now. I've talked about, like, I swear I've got this memorized by this point, but we follow our main character who is decided to leave home because her father has remarried and they have just had another child and she feels like she is not being loved or paid attention to so she's like peace out I'm leaving and she meets a man in the park and the man is basically like hey don't don't, don't run away I've got a place for you to stay if you do some things like you know, have a dream fall in love and so she moves very cheaply into this house with a couple of guys and a landlord and she does go to school with some of these guys and it's just her thriving <laughs> basically and it's super cute it's got a lot of, it's got the found family trope and it's super super cheesy but I absolutely love it so I can't wait to dive even more into the series oh I'm so glad I could get one of those in there pick number four is read a book you don't know much about the next one is to read a book you don't know a whole lot about, which is perfect because I also want to read Devil in Winter by Lisa Kleypas. This is the third in her Wallflower series, so of course now I need the rest of them. Uh, but this was a Christmas present for my lovely friend Taylor, who is the reason I put it on my TBR to begin with, because she sent this to me and said, you need to read it. And honestly, that's like all I needed to know. So I put it on my wish list and she got it for me. And I'm so excited uh, because winter is in the title, so it has to be surrounding the winter, right? Like it's gotta be during the cold months. I don't know, but do you see how pretty that cover is? Oh my goodness. Okay. I have no idea what this is about. So it looks like it follows Evangeline and this Viscount who's named Sebastian. And the Viscount is like a rogue, seductress, that kind of person. And Eve is thought of as like a wallflower. And so something happens. She escapes her scheming relatives and decides to convince this Viscount to do a kind of a marriage of convenience. And so it's the two of them as they get married. And obviously they have attraction towards one another. Um, it's like, you know, marriage of convenience, hate to love, maybe forced proximity, maybe like all of the fun tropes that I like. So I'm very excited about this. And that's really all I know about it, but that's really all I need to know. So thank you Taylor for telling me to read this. I'm very excited to do so. <laughs> All of the historical romance. All of it. I want it all. Pick number five. Oh, here we go. Oh, a Philippa Gregory book. Oh, I forgot she was in there. The next one is just Philippa Gregory. I've got a couple of these in here where they're just authors because I've got a lot of stuff by authors like Philippa Gregory, Joanna Lindsay, things like that. Um, so this is just to read a book by Philippa Gregory. And so I've been reading her kind of Plantagenet Tudor series. I've got it all right there. Um, and I've been reading it in order of, I think, how she said to read it. It's not how it was published. It's like historically how she is suggesting you read it. And the next one I've been putting off honestly for no reason and that is the other Bolin girl so this was made into a movie and that might be why because I do know what happens and also this is a thick book she likes to write really thick books like it's 
650, more than 650 pages. It is 662 pages, which is a long one. So we need to find an audiobook of this. But this is basically following, oh shoot, Mary. Mary Boleyn, who is the sister of Anne Boleyn, who becomes the second wife of King Henry VIII. And it's her story because she does, I think, historically, but it also, I'm, I don't know how historically accurate this one specifically is, but she attracts the attention of the king and then her sister is like, no, 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 and steps in and kind of takes over. So I think we follow primarily Mary, um, but it's just the court at this time. So yeah, not sure what I'm getting into. I don't know how this will, you know, relate to the movie. I do have the movie, so I'd be very curious to watch it because it's been quite a few years since I've seen it just after having read this because I'm sure there is so much more to this because this author is a historian and so she dives real hard into the history and it is very politically and court intrigue driven so like if you don't like this time period and you don't like very deep dive histories she's probably not an author for you but I do love the books that I've read by her so far so I'm excited and nervous mostly because this is so large. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna read. Pick number six. Oh, here we go. All right, read a humorous book or one that you think will be. This one is to read a humorous book and I've definitely used this author for this prompt in the past. So that's gonna be my next Tessa Dare book, which is A Week to Be Wicked, which is the second in the Spindle Cove series. Um, as many of you know, I've been buddy reading all of Tessa Dare's books with my friends Taylor and Brooke, and so we've decided to start the Spindle Cove series in December. So this is the next installment that we need to read. Um, and this has been described to me as if you like Anastasia and you like that kind of like, forced proximity, one bed on a journey thing, this is the book for you. Because we follow a girl named Minerva, who we did meet in the first book, and she is my favorite character. I'm so excited. Um, but she has to leave Spindle Cove, and then this guy who was like a rogue also leaves Spindle Cove at the same time, and so for some reason they're traveling together. I don't know, but I just, I love her. Tessa Dare's writing is so funny and I just she just has a very interesting and humorous way at looking at the world and having her characters look at the world so I'm very curious to see where we're going to go from here because I was not in love with the first book the Christmas novella that takes place between the first two books was was what I expected her to, the first book to be so I was a little let down by the first book but because I do adore this character so much I think this will be I think I'm, I'm going in with a little bit higher expectation but I'm excited and um Tessa Dare is just funny, so that's my answer. Pick number seven. Maybe. There we go. All right. I hate everything. It wasn't even close to being nice to me. Okay, so um, the basket was mean to me again. It, it was not through last month. It decided it was going to be rude again. So I got <laughs> pick two books for every prompt. So instead of eight books, there's still going to be eight prompts, but instead of eight books, we're going to have 16 books. So let me go back <laughs> to the previous six prompts and um, pick new ones. Oh, but the first one is A to Z book. So I am going to do another random letter generator. So hopefully this one will be nicer to me again. So here we go. This is what we did last time. So v there's no way. There's no way. Hold on. <laughs> I have a suspicious feeling we're going to have to pick another letter because this feels almost impossible to find something for. Got a W over here. It's going to do me no good. Yeah, okay, we're gonna have to do this again because I literally, what is my luck? I can't find anything. Okay, let's try this again, shall we? Maybe W, okay, I did see some Ws. I did see some Ws. So for this one, I'm gonna choose a book that I don't own, um, but I'm gonna pick it up <clears throat> either from the library, I don't know if the library has it or I'll just purchase it myself. Um, and that is Winter House, and I forgot who this is by. I'm trying to look at my computer. Ben 
Gooderson, maybe? Um, so this is a middle grade. So I was trying to get a middle grade in this month because if you had seen my goals for the year, I'm trying to read one middle grade every, at least one middle grade every single month. And this one, it's got Winter House in it. It feels like it's going to be kind of like that wintry mystery. I did see this on Gavin's channel from How to Train Your Gavin. Um, and it's middle grade. I don't remember a whole lot about it, but I do think it follows this kid who comes to like this hotel or this house called Winter House and then some mysterious stuff starts happening. Um, I'll see if I can link it down below. Like I usually link all the books down below. So feel free to go look deeper into this because I don't remember everything about it. Because um, again, I put this on my TBR a little ways ago, so I don't remember all the details, but I do, I will get to this at some point. So there. I got my middle grade in. So that actually, that actually helped. All right, so for my second prompt, which was read an adult book, the second one I'm gonna read is actually one that I just got last month, which is King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. So this was in the adult December unplugged box, which due to some issues, I ended up getting both the adult and the YA books. I didn't unbox the adult one just because, um, Oh, I was too excited. Um, but this is what came in it, and I am very excited about this one. So this one is the same author who did that Hades and Persephone series that, like, everybody lost their mind about, and I definitely have had on my radar for quite a while. I've been wanting to read, and this one I think is real new. Like, it came out, like, the last couple of months or so because I've been seeing it everywhere. Um, I don't really know what it's about, but it follows a girl, and I think she gets married to a vampire of sorts, and her goal is to kill him, but he discovers her plot and says basically like, if you try to kill me, I'll make you undead. I don't know how that would work. Um, and then I think there is attraction between the two of them. So I'm excited to dive into this one. I, I don't know, like it just, I've been seeing it everywhere and it sounds good. So I wanted to give it a shot. So I'm going to, let's see if I like this author. And then like, maybe I'll purchase the entire Touch of Darkness, um, Persephone, Hades series because uh, that sounds real good. But yeah, so that's my other adult book. So the third, so we're on the third prompt, which was to um, read a book with an Asian main character or Asian author. So again, I think I'm doing both here. Um, definitely the author. So I'm going to pick up These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This is kind of a, uh, I've been told it's like a Romeo and Juliet retelling set with like mobs or gangs and like Shanghai? Yeah, Shanghai in 1926. The blood feud between two gangs that run the streets red, numbing the city of its chaos. So I do know that the second one came out. I don't know if it's just a duology or if there's more. The second one it did come out recently and I've had my eye on this for quite a while since it came out and I just never picked it up. But I picked it up recently from Y'all Fest because it has this absolutely beautiful inscription in it that I love because she did sign it but she also wrote the stars incline us they do not bind us. So I'm I'm very excited about this. So yeah I don't really know what I'm getting into but I've heard fantastic things. So we're gonna give this a shot. The fourth prompt was to read a book that you don't know a whole lot about, um, and one that I wanted to get to this month was A Lot So um, by Darcy Little Badger. Now, I don't know a whole lot about this. I've heard it's really, really good. It's absolutely stunning, um, and I do believe it follows a indigenous, yeah, it follows an indigenous main character. I, seriously, I have no idea what this is about, but, um, I'm excited to give this a try. Um, so it looks like it takes place kind of in a different America, um, and there might be magic because I see lots of wolves on the cover. Seriously, like I know nothing about this book. Look how pretty that is. So um, I'm going to probably go into this blind, but it sounds really good. I've heard fantastic things about it, and it gives me winter vibes. So I'm going to give it a try. So the next book that um, or the next prompt that we picked up was Philippa Gregory, so I'm going to pick the next one in the Tudor England series, which is The Boleyn Inheritance. Um, and I don't actually know what this is about. It follows three women, Anne of Cleves. Oh, I'm reading this and now it's all coming back to me. Follows three characters. We have Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, and Jane Rockford. So Anne of Cleves and Cla Catherine Howard are both wives of Henry VIII. Um, and then Jane Rockford is... The one who basically sent, I think, Anne Boleyn to the gallows. Um, and it's saying 
because they all have a different sort of balloon inheritance. Anne's is accusations and false witness. Catherine's is the threat of the axe. And Jane's is a fortune and a title in exchange for her soul. I'm not really sure what we're getting to, but it's going to be three separate women who are affected by, I think, Anne Boleyn specifically. So yeah, this is the next one after the other Boleyn girl. So, uh, I'm going to get to two Philippa Gregory books this month, which is going to be, oh, they're thick. So we might have to start and end the month with these because I'm going to need quite a few in between. These are some thick and dense books. But we'll see. We'll see. So the sixth prompt that we're doing twice is going to be read a humorous book. And I think if I remember correctly, the writing of this author is also humorous. So I'm going to be reading actually an e-arc I got, which is The Runaway Duchess, Duchess, Duchess by Joanna Lowell. I read the first one in the series on NetGalley, like when it came out, I think sometime last year. So it's been like a whole year since I read that one. And this is, I think, like a companion series. Like it takes place after the events of the first book, but it follows a different character. And I honestly completely forgot what this book is about. Um, but I think it just runs away. And it's a love story. <laughs> but I was lucky enough to read the first in the series on NetGalley. And then I saw that the second one was coming out. I didn't know there was going to be another one coming out. And I am so excited. This is on like my anticipated releases of the year. And I was, I'm so lucky that I'm able to get an arc of it. So I'm going to read this hopefully in the first half of the month. Because it does come out, I believe, around January 18th. Um, so be on the lookout for like a Goodreads review if you want to know my thoughts on this one. But yeah, it's another historical romance. But I remember the first one being really funny at moments. So like, this one might be totally not even right for this prompt, but I feel like the writing was funny. So I'm gonna say this one. Maybe. Okay, now let's go into the actual seventh prompt. Because, uh, we still have two more prompts to pick. <laughs> okay, maybe actual pick number seven this time? Got a cover that has a random color. So we got another random generator this time for the color. So let me pull up a random color generator and then that color has to be just somewhere on the cover. So here we are. I think it just automatically goes to it. Um, okay, so it's this sort of pink. This actually might work. Hold on. I might be hardcore cheating for this one, but I'm going to go with Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune because I feel like right around here is pretty similar to that color, like on the ground, right? Um, I'm saying it is. So I'm going to go with this one, which is great because this is a buddy read with my friend Lauren that I was supposed to do last month, but we both hardcore were like, we don't have time for this, so we moved it to January. And I am very excited because I've heard fantastic things about this, but this follows a man in kind of this limbo between life and death, and it's at this little, like, hut that he's at, and I think he's given a, like, time period if he can only be there for, like, a week, and it's him and the owner, bartender kind of person. I've heard fantastic things about this book. I love the last book that came out by this author. It was actually one of my favorites last year. So, um, we're gonna give it a try, but I'm gonna count that that is a little pink, you know? It's my game, it's my rules, that's what I'm saying. All right, and then the second book that I have to, or the second color I have to choose from is going to be, come on. Oh, I have to refresh, okay. Ugh, you can make me do it, hold up. All right, here we go. So the second color is going to be purple. Well, shoot, okay, hold on. The color went away, but I'm going to go with Lore Olympus, the first volume by Rachel S Smith, Smith, um, because I think that purple is kind of right in here. Um, and this is a retelling, reimagining in a comic form of the Hades and Persephone story. This was a web comic um, that has been turned into physical books. Their second volume is also coming out sometime in the summer of this year, but um, I absolutely love this. This is also, spoiler, on my list of books to read by the end of the year. So I needed to get something, this isn't necessarily short, but it is going to be easy to get through because it is, you know, a graphic novel, but I have, I started this online. I did start reading this one online and then I got really far behind and then she announced that she was coming out with <laughs> this like bind up physical copy and so I just decided to wait and catch up 
in the physical form. So that's what we're doing. I'm very excited about this because I love me some Hades and Persephone and also like these illustrations are just stunning. So I'm excited to get to this one. And number eight. There we go. Read a book featuring mental health representation. The final prompt is going to be read a book with mental health in it. And I'm guessing on these because I don't know for a fact, but I think there will be some mental health representation in these. And the first one is going to be the fourth volume of Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. This is just giving me like winter vibes. Um, but this basically is just a story that follows two guys, Nick and Charlie, and their romance together. It starts with one of them questioning their sexuality and it just kind of spirals into greatness from there and also it's super cute. But based on some things that happened in previous volumes, I think we're going to dive into some mental health within this one because um, we have dived into mental health before. So I'm not sure if this is accurate or not, but based on past volumes, I think we'll be talking about some stuff in here. So the second book that I'm going to pick for this prompt is... <sighs> I don't know if this counts or not, you know? Like, I think it might, but I'm not sure. So let me know in the comments if you've read this book, because I'm sure many of you have, um, if I'm right. If I'm not right, I'll come up with another answer throughout the month and let you know in my wrap-up. But I think I'm going to go with A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. So this follows Nesta, which is one of the sisters in this series, um, after the events of the last book. And there's a, I know there's a lot of talk of trauma in here, and I think that could go hand to hand with some mental health stuff going on, but I'm not sure. I know we're going to talk a lot about the trauma within this book, so I I don't know. I might be all kinds of wrong, but let me know. But I think that there, there might be something in here um, with Nesta, but anyway, it's her story after the events. It's quite thick, but I have absolutely adored the Akatar series and so I can't wait to dive into this one because I need to know. I keep skipping over like reels and stuff online that people are making of this because I don't want spoilers but it's been like a full year right like since it's come out or something like that so I just I need to finally do it and also I have a friend that's been like telling me to read this for a, a long time. Um, so yeah I'm gonna finally hopefully fingers crossed get around to it. That's a uh, I'm not holding that up that's ridiculous. Plus there's a few more books that I need to fit in, and I just didn't. Um, <laughs> oh boy. All right, stay tuned for February's TBR, where I stress about how many punishment pits I'm going to have to add. Good fun. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've got on this ridiculous <laughs> TBR, and if, like, you know, some of them fit for the prompts that I picked them for. I don't know. Um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you've got any fun books that you're planning on starting out the year with. We're starting out with a bang, you guys. Starting out with a bang. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe it down below if you want to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links, so don't forget to check all of that out, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!